Welcome back to Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems. I'm your host, Adam Grubb, here at the 11 o'clock Pacific hour. Uh, a, another jam-packed hour of builders and specialists, and of course, great, great content, helping you guys understand the building space in today's market. Live from the International Builders Show in Las Vegas, unseasonably cold right now, and I'm with the CEO of NAHB, Jerry Howard. Jerry, I asked specifically for 75 degrees and sunny, you didn't come through. That's your first disappointment of the day. <laughs> it is my first disappointment, <laughs> but I thought you said you wanted it to be 7.5 degrees. Oh, well, then you're right on. <laughs> you're, you're, you're spot on. Uh, Jerry, this is, of course, a, a huge week for you guys. This is your week. This is your Super Bowl, and every year it gets bigger and bigger and better and better. We're back in Vegas uh, this year and next year. Tell me a little bit about what this show means to the NHB, means to the people that are coming here, and just the general vibe. We're two hours into into today and into the show. What, what do you feel as you walk around? Here? Oh, it means everything to, to NEHB. This is the, the, the only time of the year where we gather with the entire membership. Uh, we, we have networking opportunities. Builders tell me all the time how much business they develop by coming to the show. Business with suppliers, business with architects, business with fellow builders, business with developers. It all starts and ends right here at the Builder Show this week. So it's very important, very exciting, Adam, and we're really glad you guys are here, too. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, it, sometimes, or most times, most years, the builder confidence and the builder market is indicative of what this show is. Are there a lot of people there? Hey, how was the Builder Show? Is it, was there a lot of people there? Was it packed? What were people saying? This kicks off the year, and we're, and if anything, we, we hope that the people that are in there are taking all their business out and, and the builder market continues to grow strong this year. You guys, have, you've got to look at this week as kind of the, the beginning of a great year, I'm sure, right? It absolutely is the beginning of a great year. We changed our officer leadership this year. Uh, our new chairman will be uh, inaugurated into office on Thursday. Greg Ugaldi from Connecticut has got a very aggressive agenda uh, that we're going to pursue uh, in terms of membership, uh, proving the value of members to our members, uh, growing our membership, retaining our members. But he also has an important policy agenda that we're going to pursue as well. Specifically, although builder confidence is high, right now housing affordability is at a 10-year low. What that means is that for many Americans, the price of their mortgage or the price of their rent is more than it should be, and that's keeping people out of the markets. So we've got to address that as a country. It's in every market, in every city and town all over America, and we need to get our leaders to pay attention to that. Well, with the National Association of Home Builders, you guys are responsible for a lot of things. You're responsible for connection, you're responsible for education, you're responsible for uh, the, the economic report and forecast, making sure Rob Dietz is on here later on in the hour. For those that, that aren't completely familiar with NHB and the power of your organization, your association, tell them what you guys do and how you can help them. Well, from a policy perspective, NEHB is one of the most powerful lobbying organizations in the country. Uh, every year, the surveys that are taken in town, NEHB is a top 10 lobbying group. And what that means is that we have access from the highest levels of the White House down to the lowest levels at the city council and every branch of government in between. And we're there to help our members lobby to work to create a balanced, fair, positive business environment. It's that simple. So we touch on everything from environmental issues to finance issues. We can work on local zoning ordinances. We can look, work on local uh, land use issues. Anything you want, we're there to help the builders have a positive business environment. And they probably don't realize the army of people that are behind the NAHB, helping everything behind the scenes, moving policies forward from, uh, from Capitol Hill to your local uh, HBAs. And, and there's a, a huge presence of NAHB across the country. And you, that's got to make you proud to be in the position of CEO today. Oh, are you kidding me? This is, a, this is a dream job. My dad was a builder and a developer. And for me to uh, represent the industry that brought me up is, is indeed an honor. Uh, it's also an honor to be on a team with the professionals I have. You mentioned Rob Dietz. Rob Dietz is the single best housing economist in the country, period. Yeah. No competition. Our lobbying team in Washington, led by Jim Tobin, our chief lobbyist, is not only respected in Washington for its power, but respected for the quality of our information and the integrity with which we do business, something that every builder should be proud of. And then you take that all the way to our state and local level, the local EOs who run the local 
uh, associations and what they do in their towns and their communities. Every woman and man that works in this organization from Washington through every one of the 700 locals is a professional, a person of integrity, and a person that is looking out for their members. It's, it's humbling to be part of it. Well, you guys have a lot of initiatives. You're always, you're always looking for what's next. You're even in low markets, high markets, it doesn't matter. You guys are always trying to go a little bit forward and you're always trying to push the market space, not just the way you guys want, but the way that it should be moved. What are some of the initiatives you have coming up in the next year to two years that are going to be important for these builders to know about? Well, I mentioned housing affordability. Uh, what we've been working on over the course of the summer, and we're going to unveil it here, is we have scoured the country and found the very best practices to use to create an environment where housing can be built, be built in an affordable manner. And we are going to give our builders uh, a document that they can take to their state and local government officials, which in turn directs them to a website that has the best practices nationwide. Now, if you are a city planner or if you are a county commissioner and you can see in your hands, in front of your computer, the best practices nationwide, that's got to be an incentive to adopt some of them. Right. So housing affordability and our effort there is huge at, the, at that level. But we are also working already with the White House and with the Democratic presidential uh, candidates to make sure that they understand that housing affordability needs to be addressed. Housing policy hasn't really been touched by the federal government in over 15 years. We have a housing affordability crisis. We intend to make housing affordability an issue in the 2020 presidential election. Well, Jerry, you guys are doing great things. You continue to, the relationship and the partnership you have with the builders across the country is admirable. And uh, it's just a privilege and an honor to be, to be with you and to talk, talk with you and to be partners with NAHB. We appreciate uh, the partnership very much. So uh, I'm grateful. You. Thanks for being here again. Thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems. We're coming up in just a bit with Kelsey Coltrane from Endura, as well as Devin Tilly from the AOC uh, podcast in just a second. First, these words from the NAHB. I know, I know. Getting out of your truck and stepping onto a job site. The last thing you're worried about is keeping track of your industry and all the BS happening in government right now. I mean, you have a business to feed, am I right? No problem. With NAHB and your local chapter, we've got your back. First rate lobbying that saves you thousands of dollars per year every year. Done. Exclusive membership buying programs that save you even more money. Oh, yeah. Networking opportunities that rival the United Nations. Naturalic. Are you sensing a theme here? Oh, and we even have a sweet yearly trade show that's the biggest of its kind for you to check out. Viva Las Vegas, people. With all this and more, the sky's the limit for you and your business. So what are you waiting for? Enjoy the fruits of membership because it's not just another trade association. It's your trade association. Back live at Professional Builders Show Village, presented by Western Window Systems. I'm your host, Adam Grubb. We're here for the next hour, and then later on this afternoon and tomorrow, outside the steps of the International Builders Show, where the best and the brightest converge every single year. Nearly 50,000 people here this week. It is cold, but it's it's okay, right? <laughs> we're, we're, we're making through, correct? I don't know. We're from North Carolina, so it's a bit chilly for me, but <laughs> well, I'm, I'm I, surviving. I, I can understand. <laughs> Kelsey Coltrane, marketing manager, from Endura, Kelsey, thank you very much for being a part of Show Village and for being here on the on the show. Tell tell me a little bit quickly, Endura, what do you guys do? Who are you? Right. So as you said, we're Endura Products, and what we do is we design and manufacture exterior door components, and not just any components. Um, you know what we're really, I would say, obsessed with is we like to get out in the field and really see the real world conditions that builders are facing as well as the challenges that builders and installers are facing every day and designing door components that can help overcome those issues. Now you guys eliminate, truly try to eliminate door related service calls for yes. builders. How, how can you make that claim but how can you, how can you make sure <laughs> that that happens? Well, we're always improving, we're always innovating, we're always designing new solutions. You know, it's an ongoing battle as conditions are constantly changing. But what we really look to do is look at the root of the issues and look where there's room for improvement. So whether that's 
extra steps at installation that really aren't necessary and that could be through the design of a component be overcome or take a lot fewer steps or not even be required at all or if that's components that are designed to automatically do things that an installer would have to do at installation or at a service call. Right. So the product itself is doing that for the installer instead of the actual human having to come out and do it. And there's so many things that that plays a part of from labor to time to efficiencies to money. Absolutely. You guys are solving problems that some probably don't even realize are there. Absolutely, and, that, and that's a challenge too, you know, having to um, kind of enlighten people on right. You know, this is something that you're very used to, but what you don't realize is that this is actually a problem. And this is something that you wouldn't have to deal with. You could save time, you could have a better install, um, and, and over the long term, save more money. When you think of a door, you think of the aesthetics, you think of the first thing people see. You, right. you, that's, uh, you go in and out. Yep. That's the door. <laughs> yep, right? that's what a lot uh, of people think of. But, yep. but you guys are, are bringing some key educational components to the forefront letting people know, hey, you can have a smarter door, you can have uh, in energy efficiencies and savings and time and cost, all this stuff. H how do you guys do that? As a marketing manager, how do you tell that story? <laughs> well, how we tell that story is simply just by telling the story of what we saw that spurred us to design that product right. and what that product does to help overcome that. So as far as designing those solutions, like I mentioned, we're always out in the field. We're always looking at what, whether it's our customers or builders, what they're facing. And then we just design different unique solutions that do different things but work together to deliver a better system. Because ideally, we want people to only have to worry about their door and how it looks and that it's just an entryway to their home. We don't want them to have to think about door components by seeing an issue and right. then learning that they're there and that they exist. And, and you're obviously the end user, but that middle person, the builder, is so yes. valuable and important to you in this process. What types of things do you have prepared and ready for them to educate, train, and ensure that they look the best they can look as a builder utilizing your products? Well, as far as education and training, I mean, we're always um, we're, we're working with our customers to um, again get out in the field right. set up meetings actually be on the job site working with builders as they're installing their door systems to help them understand those products and as far as products go i mean what we have our replaceable dexel which is actually up for an award this year and being shown here at show village and that's a great example of just something as simple as a removable sill deck instead of having to cut out the entire sill or remove a door system entirely which is a huge hassle and cost yeah. to a builder just with a simple solution, they're able to get rid of that issue when sill deck damage does occur. So a high-performing door, what does that mean? A high-performing door is some, a door that never stops working for the builder or even the end user. And what I mean by that is whether it's at installation or down the line, it's designed to keep working and to keep doing things to help prevent leaks, infiltration, and resulting service calls. So if people want more information, they want to learn a little bit more about you guys. Where do they go and what, what steps can they take? Well, uh, they need to go to www.enduraproducts.com um, or they can pick up the phone and give us a call as well. Um, we have a great customer service team and, um, and we're online and ready to connect with a member of our team to help dive into their issues and see what we can do. Well, thank you very much for being part of Show Village and for your continued support and partnership. Good luck this year with Endura Products and it's very nice to talk to you. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for being on the program. Devin Tilly is up next uh, from the AOC, uh, AOC podcast. First, though, a thanks to our sponsor, Universal Force Products. When it comes to premium profile products, give your products projects an edge with UFP Edge. Natural, primed, or pre-finished, UFP Edge is simply the best line of siding, pattern, and trim on the market. See the latest interior shiplap styles and finishes with timeless nickel gap, shiplap charred wood, and rustic barn wood. UFP Edge shiplap is perfect for walls, ceilings, and other interior services. Visit ufpedge.com for details. Devin Tilly, the informational entrepreneur. I'm here. AOC. Did you make that title up yourself? Well, I got to be careful about the AOC conversation right now in politics, but art of construction. Right. I, I run there the global go. megaphone, so yeah. Okay. So, so Devin, tell me a little bit about, about your background, your history. Thanks for coming on the show again. You were on the show yeah. last year. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you have going on and, and just who you are. Yeah, my name's Devin Tilly. I'm a serial entrepreneur running the Global Megaphone, the Art of Construction. I passionately started this going on five years ago before podcasting was cool. And I'm <laughs> continuing to love and passion. And, and my job is to connect the dots and the construction silos that have built and built up 
technology and all the things that are coming out there. We have so many awesome conversations on a, on a podcast called The Art of Construction. So 21st century marketing tools. Yes. That's, that's something that could, could span the globe. We could be here for six hours talking about that. Yeah. The changing landscape of media and marketing and conversations and social, it is, it's an up at dawn task to make sure you have everything in your tool bag that you need to market a business and, and market companies. Totally. You help do that. Yeah, I, I would say podcasting, thinking forward, is one of the most important tools in your toolbox. You know, I, I love coming to IBS and seeing all these amazing things, but it's a couple of days to try to capture it all in, and it's just impossible to get it all. So for podcasting, when I uh, started this, it had to be one-way listening. So, and you have more time when you're sitting back in your car to take that in. So I'll be presenting here for the NAHB or talking about learning and growing through podcasting. Right. You know, what is something you want to work on personally in business? There's a podcast for that. Now, you work with builders, architects, designers, contractors. You help them grow, help them be more efficient. What, what if someone called yeah. you and said, hey, I need help, what would be your first thing you say, hey, I can help you do this to drive more money to you? I would say the art of construction is for you contractors and affiliates to grow your business. So every fireside chat we have, we sit back and think about how we can help contractors and the teams grow their business. So like we're, we're uh, launching a deep dive series here at IBS with Builder Trend. So it's three episodes where we interviewed employee number one, then we inter interview the founder, and then we interview one of their customers. So you can go on three rides to work right. and learn about Builder Trend, which is an awesome platform for construction. The information and education coming from your team and from your network uh, is world class, and and people need. Thank you. You're welcome. People need to understand that that you can still, even if you've been a builder for 25 years, 50 years, today there's something different than yesterday, and totally. and you're helping bring that to the forefront. Uh, one of that would be the uh, B2B supplier to to trade systems. You you've got different things that you say. Hey, here's the overarching ideas but then here's some specific things that you can do to help grow your business right yeah the uh, the impetus when I started the art of construction I own a window and door company in Colorado so we're headquartered in Denver and I say you know you really have to take the global megaphone but the devil's in the details so we'll take times when we'll really zoom in on a specific topic and really get serious about one deep dive or we'll zoom out and just get some old-fashioned coaching sometimes we need a kick in the ass yeah you know? yeah well you you've got a a, a pretty nice bench of, of experts that you talk to. But your conversations, they, they range for all, all over the map. And so there is something for, for anybody on your podcast. Are, do you go out and find those people yourselves and those topics or these things you're interested in? Or are you hearing from builders saying, God, I wish I knew how to do that. This is where I need to go. How can I, how can I get there? Yeah, great question. And it's a mixture of everything. You know, owning a window and door company it helps me keep my boots on the ground to be relevant of what our customers, contractors, and affiliates really need to grow their business. So we have that. So it's just a nucleus of, you know, I'm big on social media and the team and out here networking. You know, my mantra is always be marketing and elevate and delegate. Right. And that's my job as the Tasmanian Devon growing the art of construction. What's been the feedback so far? How long have you been doing the Art of Construction podcast? Five years, okay. yeah. And yeah. so, and, and what's been the feedback specifically over the last couple of years as your uh, listenership and, and, and uh, support system of fans have, have started to, to really catch on to the, to the AOC? It, you know, it's, it's a, it runs the gamut. You know, now that I turned this hobby into a business, everyone always, you know, the analytics and the matrix of who's your audience. And I say it's any contractors and affiliates that want to grow their business. And the builders that are coming out there now, there's this little company called Amazon mm -hmm. that have changed how things and how people think today. So the new age builder could be very different where we're talking about robots and drones and platforms or homes, going back homes to the Homes coming beginning. out of a box. Yes. So we have Boxable on the show earlier exactly. this morning there here at, uh, at Show Village. That, that's a home that's literally, that folds out of a box. Right. Builders need to understand what's happening and, and how they can be a part of that too. How that's not scary. Amazon. Amazon construction or Amazon in, into construction is not scary if you're prepared for it and have an idea to attach yourself to a brand like that, right? And, and get educated. The podcasting is that tool where you can take the time to learn about the trends. Like we did a 15 episodes called System Build Lifestyle where we met with 
Katerra and Bensonwood and all these companies like Boxable where we're learning, but not just the big companies. We also met with people about doing finance that way, how it's being delivered. We had a Jeopardy episode where we talked through the details of that kind of stuff. And you're yeah. talking about design trends as well, too. You're not just talking yeah. about here's how to build a better business as a builder. You're saying here's what you need to pay attention to. Uh, indoor outdoor living, for instance, uh, and, and expanding the space and, and really showcasing products that, that are out there that people might not know that can help them look and be a better builder, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of other podcasts outside of the art of construction. The Shays Lounge for Designers, Inside the Firm podcast, brings you inside the firm of a small firm architect. You know, the contractor fight, he's a high school football coach, and he, he lets me know when yeah. I need to kick. So, that's the job. It's this family of art of construction that I'm building and all these podcasts together. When people say that there's an oversaturation of podcasts because now it is cool, uh, my answer is always, well, as long as you find the content that makes sense for your business, it doesn't matter how many of them are out yep. there that you're not listening to. You've named a few that, uh, that make sense. People want to listen to you. They want to be part of your, your army. How do, they, how do they do that? Where do they go and what do they do? Yeah, the AOC.us, we make sh custom show notes on every page, but we're on all the iTunes, Stitcher, all the platforms. Uh, hit me up on social media. That's where I live. I'm passionate about the art of construction. You know, I'm, I'm here to help everybody grow together, man. Devin Tilly, thank you, my, my man. Awesome. appreciate it very Thanks much. Thanks for having me. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, Devin Tilly, the art of construction. Again, what's the, uh, your social handles? Just the website, we're all there, theaoc.us. Awesome. Get there and be part of his army. Listen to his podcast. It's fantastic. We're back in a moment on Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems. Back in a moment. Thanks, man. Thank you. When I was tasked with um, creating a new um, architectural set of plans for the 2019 New American Home, we wanted to get to a less than 50 hertz rating. And so some of the ways we achieved that goal was the back of this house has deep overhangs, which is generally facing west. And uh, in addition to that, we use the 7000 series windows. And the 7000 series, along with the deep overhang, uh, gave us some really great uh, energy efficiency across the back of the house, which is where most of the glass is, by the way, because we are looking right now out the back of this home at the beautiful Las Vegas Valley uh, city lights in the evening, and today it's a crystal clear day and it looks awesome. You know, we wanted this home to blend in with the mountainside here within the community of Ascaya. Um, so we chose some darker colors on the exterior of the home. We also chose the dark bronze finish, and it was a great complement to our color palette that we had for the exterior of the house. You know, some of the favorite parts of this 2019 New American home that I designed into it were the way that we created an indoor-outdoor living space, and we have a multi-slide uh, window door system that's going right through the middle of the cabinets that separate the kitchen indoor cooking area to the outdoor kitchen area. And um, it's really one of, one of my favorite spots of the house. Welcome back. Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems. I'm your host, Adam Grubb. We are here at the International Builders Show, just on the steps of uh, Show Village. <clears throat> As we continue on today, it is warming up, the sun is shining, and that is good news for everybody involved here. Jesse Marcus, Propane Education Research Council. You're the Director of Residential and uh, Commercial Business Development. Yes, sir, that's correct. Thanks for being here, appreciate it very much. So for those of, that don't know the Propane Education Research Council, tell us what PERC does is a little bit about you guys. Yeah, absolutely. So we are the checkoff program for the propane industry. So that means that we get a half of a cent every time one gallon of odorized propane is sold in the U.S. And we take that money um, and we spread it across multiple markets. So auto gas, which is on-road vehicles, outdoor power equipment, so generally your commercial mowing. Uh, material handling, forklifts, that's it's pretty well known in the propane industry. That's been a, a long um, running application that we've been a part of. Um, agriculture as well, and then the residential and commercial uh, markets, along with safety and training. So 
again, cover those markets. We work on partnering with different manufacturers um, to bring new technology to market, um, but also in a space like this, talking to builders about how propane can fit as a solution in custom homes or in large-scale communities. And that's something that people might not even realize was a thing until right. about five years ago, and then people are starting to look for more efficient ways cost savings, builders and developers and uh, those that are, that are even homeowners and they're trying to find better ways to live and you guys help do that. Absolutely and so again what we're really trying to, to kind of convey here and one of the messages that we're really harping on is the efficiency of our propane appliances is really second to none. Um, in some circumstances, 98% efficiencies on home heating and gas furnaces. Um, so not only do we have efficient product, we also have product that you can use outside of natural gas distribution lines. And that's something not everyone thinks about. So outside of natural gas, you can still have the luxuries and the efficiencies and high performance of gas appliances. And that is, not only do people not think about it, they might not believe it. Right. So how do you, not convince them, but how do you change the, the narrative there to ensure that people know that you're not just for forklifts at a, at a warehouse? Absolutely. One of the things that we do um, is sponsor the home, home, excuse me, exactly like the one behind us. Um, so within this house, which is a modular home, there are different gas appliances all throughout. So there's a tankless water heater from Renai, um, a furnace from Goodman, uh, cooking infrastructure from Whirlpool, and I believe also the clothes dryer and the washing machine is from Whirlpool as well. Right. And then in the front, actually, as you walk into Show Village, you will see a Briggs & Stratton generator that runs on propane as well. Um, and that's something that we're touting due to kind of grid unreliability, right. um, power outages, and kind of the cost of that, not only in your wallet, but also peace of mind. Um, that's something that is really important, especially in the wake of a lot of natural disasters that have been happening the last few years. And as, as land and, and people decide to live differently and build homes in, in rural areas, and they start to develop rural areas more and more, this is gonna become more and more important to, to builders, developers, homeowners. You guys, you, you don't sell it, you connect it, right? You're bringing the connection, the education, and the awareness of, of the efficiency and the versatility of your product uh, of propane to the masses. That's right. That's, that's exactly a tough right. order, though. How do you, right? It is. And that's tough. your job specifically. <laughs> yeah, that is. So that's really <laughs> difficult. Um, it is. It's an interesting dynamic because you're exactly right. We are not the ones selling the propane. Um, but we're, what I look at it as, as is kind of building opportunity around it. Um, so for educational purposes, of course, trying to raise awareness and engage um, construction professionals to, to know about the different types of things we do. And just kind of going back about off-grid, um, not off-grid per se, but just building outside of these A and B lots with normal um, natural gas infrastructure, that is a really great opportunity for us because it's something that we call a lot of just kind of energy independence. You can literally live wherever you would like using propane, and you're not gonna lose any of the comfort, the performance, efficiency of the different appliances we have. It's still gonna be there no matter where you are. So it's really what you're doing is you're, it's almost like a, a gas-powered car to an electric car. People think all of a sudden, well, the electric car doesn't have as, as much power, as much of that, that horse, and that same thing here. If it's not, propane doesn't have the same, right? I mean, isn't it very similar? People, they, yeah. don't, they don't know that, that it is just as good as what they've been used to for exactly. 100 years? Exactly. And so when we like to compare ourselves to natural gas, because that is something that people know a lot about. Right. So it's just up to us to get that messaging out to make sure that people are aware of exactly what we're doing and the different applications that we have. What about large-scale communities? That's really important. And, and again, it's kind of a goal of mine coming out of this show is I want builders um, of large-scale communities to know that there is a certain type of infrastructure, fueling infrastructure for homes called community systems or jurisdictional systems. And what it is, it's a few large tanks offset from the community. People living in that community would never even know it was there. It's going to generally be underground or kind of fenced in, very safe, um, but it flows gas to each home individually, so it's net meter. So it's the same exact experience you would have with natural gas, but it's propane. Um, and so in certain cases, it's pretty expensive to extend a natural gas line. So if that's not an option, this is a really good solution. So again, in areas where it might just be electric, we have the, uh, the gas option here with community systems. Uh, expense of this for builders, developers, 
infrastructure. Is this a viable option for small scale, large scale? It is. Multifamily it, doesn't matter, does it? Doesn't matter because working with the propane retailers, which there's about 2,800 in the United States, and the propane retailer is the one that actually sells the gas and will set this infrastructure up. Um, from time to time, they'll, they'll eat the cost knowing that they'll get the gallons through actual use within the community. Jesse Marcus from the Propane Education and Research Council. How do they find out more information about PERC? Propane.com is our new website. Please check it out. All the markets that I mentioned at the beginning of this uh, interview are covered there. Um, Propane.com, Propane can do that. Jesse Marcus, Adam Grubb. <laughs> Jesse Marcus can do that. <laughs> Jesse, a, a pleasure as always. Good to see you. Thanks for being a part Thank of you. the show. Uh, coming up in just a second, oh, hang tight for me. Uh, coming up in just a second is Seth Hart. Uh, senior designer DJ, D, DT, geez, the, the cold is getting to my mouth. DTJ Design and Mark Petrowitz uh, is here in just a second as well. First of all, we want to thank Ultimate Builder Services uh, for their support of Show Village and Professional Builder. Ultimate Builder Services is one of the largest interior design firms focused on model homes. They work with many of the nation's largest builders and actually have designers living in all regions of the country. Their design team tries to incorporate the latest trends in home furnishings to their model home interiors so they, every buyer can envision themselves in their new home. In 2019, UBS is seeing a move towards more tile and beige with global influences, sun-drenched, and warmer tones. Thank you to Ultimate Builder Services for your support of Show Village and of Professional Builder Show Village Live. Seth Hart joins me now on the couch. Seth, how are you? Good, how are you doing, Good Adam? to see you. So my, uh, my mouth is frozen. <laughs> So I'm going to, I'm going to have me you, too. and, and your, your company is all initials, so tell me tell who you work for. Let's see if I can get through it. It's <laughs> DTJ Design. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so DJ, see, I can't do it. <laughs> uh, what do you guys do? What does what this week look like for you here at Show Village at, at International Builder Show? Yeah, so we're an architecture, landscape, and planning firm, and we specialize in all things from residential housing to uh, themed, themed entertainment and themed attractions. So we're kind of... We're in a lot of different places, but uh, personally, I'm with the architecture team and uh, do a lot of uh, a lot of residential architecture, amenities, things like that. So, I'm here to just kind of see what's new and inter interesting, see what kind of new products are out there, and uh, kind of hear what different trends are across the nation. You know, that's that's literally the number one question that we hear uh, is what's next? What are the design trends? What what do we what do we like uh, interior? What do we like exterior? What are the design trends that you guys are seeing as really taking a hold of a market uh, of, of new construction? Well, I think, you know, interior trends, I think people live, are living in houses kind of the same way. It's the open floor plans. Um, right sizing is something that's coming into play that has to do more with density, which I'll get into in a minute. But, you know, I think the interior trends, the colors and finishes and textures are always kind of changing. But, you know, on exteriors, it, it's always, it's leaning more modern. So that transitional style and, Modern influences on more historic, uh, traditional uh, styles, I think, is a big influence. And that's been going on for a little while, but I think that really is continuing on. It's the, the contemporary interiors with the contemporary exteriors. Are you seeing a, a, a change in design features and, and needs because of things that are happening in the market, like a, a labor shortage or, you know? Absolutely. So, so builders Absolutely. are saying, hey, I can't, do, I, I can't do all that. Yeah. And like, think, what are you talking about? Cut I think one, one of the biggest trends there is right now is it's, we're trying to do smaller houses, smaller designs. Um, we're trying to figure out how to get attainable ho housing. And, you know, whether it's materials, whether it's size, whether it's, you know, density of townhomes. I mean, a lot of single family builders, traditional single family builders are doing townhomes and right. looking to get into multifamily and condos. So, uh, you know, everyone's trying to, to crack the nut on how do we how do we get a house, an entry level new home built? But, and, but they're still cool. Oh, like absolutely. The well, st they still, that, that's what that's my that's, job. That's, job, that's, that's right? what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So you know, I'm, I'm out there trying to figure out ways, and and I think there's little concessions. I was just talking with a builder last night, and they said, well, if you're going to tell me I got to build a 12 or design a 1,200 square foot home, you better let me put a 10 and 12 roof pitch on it because that's going to give it some charm and some character. So. I think there's little things that you still have to keep in mind, but you can make a small house really interesting and really charming. I mean, there's a, a lot well, of historical homes that, have, that everyone flocks to that yeah. are 1,200 square feet, yeah. so I don't know why you, we can't do that again. We've done it here yeah. uh, at, at Show Village. Absolutely. I mean, these are our homes that were built off site, shipped in on a container here to the parking lot and, and, and put up, and they're very quaint, they're very cool, and, yep. and, and they're efficient too. Absolutely. So what is the, the most challenging thing right now for you as an architect and, and in the design space to say, here's what everyone's asking for, 
here's what I would love to do, but I can't because of this. What's what you know, keeps you up at night? I, I, <laughs> price point for everything. Okay. I mean, everyone's trying to build as, as efficiently and economically as possible. So, you know, it's little things like I mentioned, the 10 12 roof pitch. That's something that right. everyone wants that modern farmhouse style, but steeper roof pitches are pretty, uh, you know, indicative of that style. And so when you want to flatten the roof pitch out, all of a sudden, for me, it's, it's losing the style and it's losing the sense of identity. And so there's things like that and materials where, you know, if you want to, we're actually going into lots of places where we're required to have 15% masonry and we're trying to design homes with no masonry to make them come in affordably and cost effective and so there's just lots of challenges with cost on every end of the spectrum and then getting into the smaller floor plans it's how do we maximize space how do we create rooms that still live really big and you can right. have that kitchen that you want to entertain in in a 1200 square foot home and still have the bedroom count you need and then storage is a huge thing too and even in colorado we're getting we're starting to move away from uh as uh, basements being standard yeah. we're going to crawl spaces and i never thought i'd see the day in colorado and now it's a pretty pretty standard thing where the basement's an option people uh, always say two things when they talk about the design of their home and that's open concept and kitchen yeah right absolutely but you're there also to say hold on a second what if we did this to make this cool and this we're going to give you a storage unit that's yep. underneath this uh, right yeah that's your job is to make the unexpected cool and to make a house come alive without just saying hey we have an open concept our living rooms connected to our kitchen absolutely and i think it's all about flexibility and versatility of space as well you know i've seen some even wall partitions that move that slide to one side and you got a living room and you slide it to the other side and you have an office and i think that there's going to be some more things like that coming into the future where we're trying to figure out how to create more flex space in a floor plan and how how your kitchen could double as your dining room and right. you know just things like that are you hearing those ideas from builders and contractors are they coming to you saying hey i wish we could do this absolutely i think that you know we get some of our best collaborations where we get a lot of great ideas from builders that are trying to be inventive trying to figure out how they can uh, set themselves apart from other builders and in the market and you know I, I think that it's 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 a fun collaborative effort that we're always doing with builders yeah. and you know we don't get a lot of pushback on on being creative and, and trying to find interesting solutions it's just when you got to put pencil to paper and figure out what it's going to cost that's where some of the uh, concessions start to come in well that relationship between the builder and architect and homeowner is a challenging <laughs> and strange yeah. relationship right yep. you've got the homeowner who wants this You've got the architect who says, and the designer says, yes, and then let's also do this. You've got the builder saying, hold on a second, I, you know, or reverse all of that. How does that. How does that work? How do you guys communicate effectively with builders and contractors so that the homeowner is happy, the builder can build what they want, and you get to design something cool. Well, it's, you know, on my end, being more in the production housing industry, it's, it's le I have a lot less uh, contact with uh, the homeowner or, so, you know, someone at that level because by that time, I'm usually out of the picture. But at the same time, I think... L luckily. Yes. But <laughs> what's interesting, though, is I get a, when some of my favorite times working with builders is when we get sales and, and marketing coming in early in the design phase because they're the ones that are directly connected to the right. prospective home buyers and they're getting a lot of feedback. And I actually always like to go hear what all that feedback is after I, we, you know, we've had a model open for, you know, six months, a year. Yeah. I'll go talk to the salesperson there and figure out what kind of feedback there is, what, what people are saying could have been done different, better, whatever. And, you know, and, and with, with us working with a builder, I think that we, we tend to see, you know, we, we really go down that process together of design, um, working together the whole time. And I think that the best collaborations are when you kind of get the, the most people in the room and yeah. we get the purchasing guy there from the beginning helping us to say, you know, that, that we might not be able to use that product. Let's not go down that path. And, and so it's just, you know, I think communication. It's, cha it's challenging. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't do it, but I'm, gl I'm glad you do. Yeah, Seth, thank you. Seth Hart, thank you very yeah, much, Seth. It, it was a great, a great conversation. Appreciate you being here. Uh, hang tight for just a second. We're going to yep. come back in a moment with our friends from Unilock, this beautiful patio that we're sitting on and our, our set is on uh, from Unilock. We're going to be back in a moment with Professional Builders Show Village Live presented by Western Window Systems.
back live at Professional Builders Show Village, presented by Western Window Systems. This is our, uh, our talk show from the uh, patio here of one of our homes at in the International Builders Show in Las Vegas. Mark Petrowitz from Unilock. Mark, nice to see you. Thanks for coming nice on. Nice to see you as and well. And we appreciate the uh, real estate that you've given us here. Uh, we You're are, welcome. We are on, your, on the back patio here of one of our, one of our homes. And uh, this is a, just an incredible courtyard that we've kind of constructed here with your product. And for those that aren't familiar with Unilock and, and the partnership that we have, but they're, if they're not familiar with your product, is it exactly as easy as it sounds, Unilock? Absolutely. So tell Absolutely. me what you guys do. We are a manufacturer of concrete pavers and retaining walls. Uh, we distribute uh, all across the, across the United States and Canada. So the outdoor living space, the extension of a home, the movement from indoor to outdoor, this helps kind of move that through, right? Correct. And, and, and really connect a home. And you guys have incredible products that most people don't even know. You have three products that can just expand a space all the way to someone's driveway if they want to. Absolutely. We have products that can go from, you know, industrial shipping ports through, you know, developments from driveways, patios, walkways, extensions of homes. I mean, we have all sorts of products for different applications. So for those that are uh, builders, contractors, uh, remodelers, they come to you and they say what? What, is their, what do they need from you and how do you help them? It, it tends to vary, but a lot of times, you know, they're just looking for design ideas to start and what products fit for the requirements that they have, whether they're looking for lead certification, whether they're looking for something to just wow the consumer right. when they drive by the house on the street or to add that saleable living space in the backyard. So you help, you actually help builders sell homes quicker. Exactly. And, and you do that because it looks fantastic exactly. off the curb, right? Exactly. So curb appeal, there's nothing, nothing more important than aesthetics, curb appeal, you drive by, and this is, you guys are literally the first thing people could see in a home. Is that stressful as a company to know that that pressure is, is on, on your product? It is, and that's why we, we continually innovate new technologies and products to, to stay ahead of the marketplace in order to create those wow factor designs right. so that when people do drive by or, or builders are trying to move houses along in a development, it's a lot easier to do that with that curb appeal that these products can create. So you say to make new products, but after a while, isn't it just what it is? I mean, can you make new products? How do you we, how do you invent? We've had 45 plus years of coming up with new technologies and new products to fit different looks and applications. So we just keep going. We're not going to stop. That's one of our biggest things is innovation and technology, and we'll continue to drive forward with those things. Now, you guys' products can be utilized across the country. You're not Correct. just for Southern California and Texas. You you guys have products that everything from the the coastlines to middle America that are going to make make your home look great, right? Absolutely. We, I mean, we do. We sell a lot of product up in Canada as well, so we can we can handle any environment you can throw at our material. What would you want from a builder if they came to you and, and you said, "Hey, what what do you want from us?" What would you want their answer to be? Uh, the, the answer I want to hear about what they're looking for. Number one, but more importantly, I need them to understand that we're we're. We're helping them sell the homes faster and helping them with profit. You know, yeah. we're not just a loss item. There you go. That's we're the word, on the that's front the, side. That's the word that right. changes the conversation, exactly. I'm sure, quickly, right? Exactly. Now, do you have training? Do you have uh, things that, to help? Because this is probably not terribly difficult to install, but it is your product. You want to make sure it's installed properly. Absolutely. And that's, uh, we have an authorized contractor program. So we have contractors that are specifically trained to install our products. And by doing that, you know, we do really educate the consumers on how to get the product in the ground and do it properly. Now, do you have uh, specific people that you have worked with in the past couple of years that just really, that they, they see this product, they love it, they, they are your premier uh, builders and partners around the country? We do, and that's, and that's a big thing for us, uh, relationships, you yeah. know, and creating those. And, and once you show someone how they can actually make more money by using these materials to sell homes faster and for more profit, then they become pretty good partners. To sell homes faster, to make more money, to uh, to look fantastic, those are the only really 
three things <laughs> right that a builder, builder should need, yeah. and your product does it. If they want to find out more about Unilock, what do they do? Visit us at www.unilock.com. Uh, they'll find a lot of excellent information on there and links to everything they could look for. Well, we appreciate the opportunity to have our set right here on uh, this patio. Your, your products are fantastic, Mark. We appreciate your time and your partnership here at Show Village Live. Uh, of course. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're going to come back in just a moment with Rob Dietz from the NAHB, Chief Economist, talking about the builder market presence and confidence level for 2019. Back in just a second, Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems. Back live at Professional Builders Show Village Live here at the International Builders Show. I'm your host, Adam Grubb. As we uh, start to wind down this episode specifically, Rob Dietz, hey. Chief Economist of the uh, NAHB. Rob, good to see you again. Good to be here. Uh, you were on last year, and it, it was a rousing response. <laughs> okay. And so we brought, we brought you back. Great, great. Honestly, you, you are one of the premier economists in the country, and your forecast we heard yesterday uh, at a couple of general membership meetings uh, here in Las Vegas that – Things are okay, right. um, and I really want to get into the conversation because uh, you know there, we could do data all day long, yeah. but I want to have a conversation with you about really what does it mean, the market today, what the market's going to look like in a couple of years, and what builders they need to understand, they need to prepare for right. or continue on. So, in quick way, how are things going? Things slowed down at the end of 2018 because of higher interest rates. Our expectation for 2019 is for growth. This is going to be pretty slight. Uh, we're dealing with housing affordability challenges. And the same challenges that have affected the industry in prior years, lack of labor, higher regulatory costs, uh, getting access to lots, they're still there, but now they're affecting home buyers. And right. so housing affordability is the real challenge uh, going forward. And people know, have known for a while of housing affordability. They've known a while that we have a labor shortage. They know for a while that uh, the market is in a 10-year little run from the from the collapse in, in 08 and and history says that it should be about time right but people are also extra careful because we weren't careful back in the mid 2000s do you see that part of this uh, slow down or is maybe not as manufactured by media by people's own fears by people not wanting the other shoe to drop well, I think the slowdown in sales that we saw in 2018 was the fact that the 30-year fixed rate mortgage got up to 5%. The good news is the Fed kind of backed off of a more hawkish position on rates. So we should, at the first part of the year, have a little bit lower interest rates. That'll help. But the, the underlying challenges are still kind of there. So the good news is wages are growing. The unemployment rate's 4%. Um, you know, we've got good demographics. So we got growth, but we're, it's constrained growth right. going forward. That constrained, constrained growth always uh, makes people a little uneasy because it's okay. So we're just doing we're just doing this. Right. Is that good or bad? Right? Well, it depends on the details. So, for example, we think maybe the suburbs are going to slow down, the outer suburbs, the exurbs, and we'll see more growth in the inner suburbs. Things like townhouse construction, tear down construction. Uh, I think building with density is going to increase and you know markets in the south and the west are going to do well because of population gains. We've seen a slowdown in the midwest. Things are a little slower in the northeast. But generally speaking, the economy is okay. We just think it's going to slow over the next two years. And you say that um, with confidence, but you say that to make sure that people understand that's not, don't just continue to ride the wave. Start understanding your business practice as a builder and a contractor, understanding your business. How do you can conserve some of that cash and some of that profit for the next few years, correct? A absolutely. Cautious yeah. optimism. Don't get caught with too much land. Be aware that we're looking at a macroeconomic slowdown in 2020, but that doesn't necessarily mean a housing crash like right. we saw in 2008. Right. And that's people's number one fear, right? Right. Is that, okay, we're riding this wave. Everything's good. Everything is, is feeling great. Uh, so that's obviously means that we're no longer 
that in two years things are going to go bad, and that's not it at all. No, things are really different now. The mortgage debt held by households is relatively small compared to, say, uh, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, households are in better shape, and builders haven't overbuilt. We actually yeah. have a deficit of a million housing units nationwide, so be cautious. Look at your local conditions, be prepared to grow, but maintain those capital to you know, work your way through a lean time. How many starts are we projected for 19? For single family starts, we think we're gonna end the year a little less than 900,000. Okay. Demographics say we should be at 1.1 million. So housing affordability is reducing that combined with some of those higher construction costs. And the housing affordability, is that built on uh, land costs around the countries where the most construction is happening and, and the land is available? Why, what are some of the key indicators that, that we're, we're in that problem? We do a quarterly index. It's based on construction costs that then transforms into prices of homes. But it's also due to interest rates. So when those interest rates rose at the end of 2018, we saw some pretty significant declines in places like California, but not everywhere. Right. Um, so we actually ended the year in 2018 on new home sales up 3%. When you look at your charts and your graphs and you look at the, at the data, uh, you can see anything, right? You, I mean, you can. I couldn't. <laughs> but you can see anything. You can see trends. You can spot those things. Sure. You can spot things that concern you or, or uh, frustrate you or get you excited. Right. So right now, what are you most excited about when it comes to this market space, market conditions, that builders and contractors and people in this space should also be excited about. I think townhouse construction growth. It's up 24% year over year. It shows that we can build with density, that there's demand for today's renters to become homeowners, and it shows that we can sell a product if you can build it affordably. There's, uh, okay, so now I'll ask you this then. What are you concerned about? The lack of productivity growth in the residential construction labor force. We have labor shortage, and it means two things. We gotta recruit younger workers, but well, we got to find ways to build more with less. And that means more manufactured housing, more panelized construction, and finding new ways to get skills training to our workforce. Are there parts of the country right now that are starting to show some red hot uh, indicators of, of great things on the horizon? Or are there parts of the country that are just helping maintain some of the areas that, that aren't doing great? You, you got the baseline levels of growth and volume of activity in places like Florida and Texas and Arizona you got small towns that are showing some signs of growth in single-family construction. I think we focus sometimes maybe too much on the big markets right. in California right. or the East Coast. Some of these small towns where the housing stock is aging are showing signs of growth. So there's some redevelopment opportunities in those markets. So I live in a small town. I, I live in Noblesville, Indiana. It's very small. There's, you know, but Indiana specifically was on one of your uh, reports uh, yesterday as showing some, some signs of, of some good, good things happening because the housing price never really change there, right? And, and they're more affordable markets. Right. Some of the hottest housing markets in the country in places like Utah, Idaho, and Colorado because they're more affordable yeah. than some of those coastal markets. And, and that's okay. Like builders should understand that some of these market spaces are, are good to go into, even if they're not red hot and they're not what has been consistently uh, the areas people are there, you can still make a lot of money, sell a lot of homes, and be a great builder in some of these other towns. That's right, and population's growing, and you can be successful in those high cost areas, just need a little help on the policy side right. to reduce those regulatory burdens. Right, and you guys are, uh, and we had Jerry Howard on earlier today, uh, and you, that's something the NHB takes very seriously. Uh, from your lobbying to your economic forecast, you, re you give that forecast to some very powerful people in the country, right? Absolutely. We sent it to the Fed, to the White House. I think one of the reasons the Fed went to a more dovish stance was we gave them data in the fall and said, hey, you guys think the economy's strong. The housing market slowed down at the end of the 18, right. and as a result, we think they backed off. Well, we, we've had a, a lot of conversations specifically around the uh, labor shortage, right. and for you, that's probably something that is affecting every one of these numbers. Right? Absolutely. The, the people are just worried. Yeah, and the construction industry is short about 300,000 workers. We are having trouble attracting young people in the industry, and it's not something we're going to solve overnight. It's going to take about a decade to really kind of work our way through. So builders, they want to get uh, from part of your information. They want to learn a little bit more of your forecast, learn a little bit more about this data. Where do they go? How do they get it? Uh, our economics blog is ionhousing.org, and our uh, forecast service is uh, housingeconomics.com. Check it out. The, most of the data is right there. Rob Dietz, Chief Economist of the NAHB. Rob, right. thank you so much. Great to thank see you, you again. Adam. Great talking with you. Appreciate it. Back in just a moment here as we continue on with Professional Builders Show Village Live. 
presented by Western Window Systems. Back in just a moment. Professional Builders Show Village Live, presented by Western Window Systems. I'm your host, Adam Grubb. We're back here live at the International Builders Show on the steps of one of our homes uh, within Show Village. I'm with Ed Brady, President and CEO of uh, HBI, the Home Builders Institute. Ed, good to see you. Yeah, thanks for, thanks thanks for, for being here. Thanks for having us. Uh, we, have had, we had Jerry Howard on earlier, CEO of uh, NAHB. We just had Rob Dietz, Chief Economist of the NAHB. This yep. is the uh, government hour uh, yeah. of, the, of the program. Hey. Uh, CEO of HBI, tell me a little bit about the Home Builders Institute, what you guys are doing. So HBI, we train, we train this, the future tradesmen and women in the industry. So we're, uh, we've got a curriculum that we've designed through industry experts uh, that we license in different areas. We, we train in military, uh, tr uh, transitioning military. So we're in six bases throughout the country, military bases, job core centers throughout the country, seven, over 70 job core centers training at risk youth in the trades. Uh, and, and we're really trying to get into what we, what we believe is the beginning of the culture change and trying to get back into the high schools and train uh, high school students to get into the trades. I don't think there's literally anything more important in the, for the success of home building, yeah. construction, and home ownership and the economy That's right. than getting that message across and getting people and kids excited about starting businesses, excited about entrepreneurship, excited about construction right. and design yep. and literally creating. That's a passion for you and your organization, yeah. right? Yeah, I've been I've been a 30-year builder, home builder. So as I've seen this these these cycles come and go, I mean, I, I went from a 90-day construction cycle to a 180-day construction cycle. Right. We just can't produce the amount of houses that we need as a country. So it's not only a passion for me personally to help these youth get into a career and 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 have a good way to produce for their their families and supply their families a, a, a good living um, the industry the average plumber is what 58 59 yeah. years old and and until we get the youth back into the industry we're, we're going to run out of good skilled labor and this is not a, a new problem this is not a news flash that we're bringing to the uh, to the American public today That's right. that there's a labor shortage but I don't think people truly understand that everybody is looking for a solution, but this is a long haul. It is. And, and you're gonna have to, and you, you're going into the Navy, you're going into some of the uh, military branches, right. you're going into high schools, you're getting, make, you know, putting kids through training programs, maker spaces, you're getting yes. people excited about working with their hands again, but you're also showing the business side of construction, correct? One of every three of our students ends up being an entrepreneur. So that's that's the future of these these sub. I'm a I'm a, uh, I'm a paper builder. I don't really hire the labor directly. I hire subcontractors, and that's where we need to feed. And look, you know, the unions are good good uh, feeders into our industry. We're good feeders into the unions. Yeah. And so we got to cooperate. We have some great corporate. You guys have been great. We've got some great corporate sponsors. Home Depot Foundation is 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 uh, funding our military, transitioning military. Norboard is funding some uh, Thank the Framer and a Houston project. So we need the whole industry to buy in. And I've, I've been going around the caucuses here this morning and talking to our members and saying, help yourselves. We've got the tools, but you need to get us into those high schools, the youth build programs. And so it's, a, it's gonna be a collaborative effort over a long period of time. It starts local, like every, from, a, from right. a nationwide perspective, NHB, uh, NKBA, NARI, uh, Professional Builder, yep. you, we can all do our part, but it starts at the local level, getting kids, getting families, right. 
changing the to conversation accept it. Yes. to accept it, right? To accept it. So we're trying to educate, and we're working with, with you guys and other marketing medias and, and so forth to get into these uh, city councils and to get into these school boards to talk about what this what opportunity there is. Not everybody belongs in a four-year or wants to go the four-year college track. Right. And so what we've been absent is this pathway to our trades. And so HBI is working with the National Housing Endowment. We're working with par partners throughout the country to try and get that feeder into the industry. Get, got to start it at sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. You got to introduce them to the industry yeah. so that they get excited about it and they know it's an option. Which it's no different than sports. I mean, we get our kids involved in sports early so they yeah. get excited about it. We yeah. talk about it, we take them to the games, we do all that stuff. That's right. If that was the same mentality with construction and or with a career path, I think you would see a big shift, right? Yeah, there's, there's, there, it's really neat. You go to these high schools and you see these award ceremonies at the end of the year. You go to one of our trades programs, you see an award ceremony yeah. at the end of the year. They get certificates and they graduate with a credential and they're proud of it. And so, yeah, it, 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 sports is a great analogy. I mean, we reward those people. We should reward the people that get in the trades. And we should not necessarily just incentize career advisors or development uh, people at the high schools for four year. We should, if they're in the school and they get a job, they go to the trades, that's a success right. as well. Entrepreneur typically means you've got time and you've got money, right? Yeah, that's right. If you do it right. That's and right. that's all. It, when I was growing up, when you were growing up, what did we want? We wanted to be successful. We wanted money. We wanted to be that's right. to be something big. And there's there's room for that, there's, for that message. There's room. And, and to get in the trades, it's not as capital intensive as some businesses. I mean, I, carpenters, you, you know, you get a carpentry belt, you got a pickup truck, tape measure. I mean, you can be a, a carpenter and you can start your own business. And so. And today, learning social media is probably the best way for some of these guys, to, right? They already yeah, know it. Well, they're coming up and, they're, and they're, they're building their business through those channels. That's exactly right. That's how they get to be known. And, and it's so much more inexpensive to, to, to network in that in that regard. And, yeah. and, and you guys are doing some great things and, and raising the awareness of these uh, of these careers. And so it's just, a, again, it's a collaborative effort. Well, and it's, it's uh, we got a lot of work. Got a lot of work and to you do. You got a lot of work cut out for you, but yeah. you're, you're partnering with the right people. You've got the right mentality, the right mindset. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys are going to do great things. Well, I appreciate it. Appreciate, appreciate Adam, your time very you. much. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for being, being here. Hang tight for just a second. All right. Uh, we have uh, much more coming up later on this afternoon on our program. And uh, with Michael Garman, who is our uh, designer and the architect of the New American Remodel, great New American Remodel home, as well as uh, Doug Walter of Doug Walter Architects. We have a, a show again tomorrow as well. We appreciate you uh, tuning in. We'll see you at 6 p.m. Eastern, 3 o'clock local for our last show of the day. Professional Builders Show Village Live presented by Western Window Systems on the steps of Show Village at the International Builders Show in Las Vegas. We'll see you in a few hours. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. And thanks for watching.